life in the modern world has a new anxiety these days. Just as we've become totally dependent on our computers, they're being stalked by saboteurs. A mysterious, almost lifelike organism attacked 6,000 computers across the nation, spreading confusion and alarm. It was a wake-up call for the internet to sort of take things a little bit more seriously, like they were caught with their pants down. I think it changed the nature of the way the public thinks about computing. That one event alone created what we now call cyber. In November of 1988, the newly formed internet would be crippled by 99 lines of code in the first ever cyber attack. The incident would receive news coverage around the world, exposing the complete lack of security on computer systems and revealing the dangers of an unprotected internet. It created a new frontier for computer science as the mentality around computer networking changed and the cybersecurity industry was born. The Morris Worm. The early 1980s were a time of explosive growth for the computer science field. The creation of affordable desktop computers promised to completely revolutionize the office space and work environment. A new concept, a way to take the office as it is and make it something it has never been, an interactive network. At the time, computer networking technology primarily focused on small, private networks, meaning that there was not much concern for security. However, the invention and widespread adoption of the Internet Protocol in 1983 sought to change that by providing a universal language for all computers across the globe to communicate. By 1988, the Internet had exploded to over 60,000 devices around the world. However, many internet applications such as email programs and file sharing services still maintained the trusting nature that existed prior to 1983 and were not designed with strict security standards. When we think about uh, networks, computer security um, wasn't something that was like in, you know, a design consideration and that was a problem back in 88. No one was paying attention to doing a second look to make sure things were good. Realizing the internet's lack of security, Robert T. Morris, a graduate student at Cornell University, had an idea. In the fall of 1988, he began working on a coding project he called The Worm, a virus that used security vulnerabilities in internet applications to replicate itself from one device to another, allowing it to spread across the internet. He claimed his worm was only an experiment to see if such a program could actually work, and the code itself was not intended to cause any harm to devices. On the evening of November 2nd, 1988, Morris released the virus from a computer at MIT, and the code spread rapidly, reaching devices across the nation in the matter of hours. As the worm spread, however, it became apparent that Morris made a critical error. The program could loop back around and reinfect the same machine multiple times, consuming more processing power and creating more copies of itself at an exponential rate. Computers were overwhelmed from being hit with hundreds of worm programs at once, and thousands of systems across the country began to crash. I dialed in to uh, check my email and discovered that my uh, system was so slow I, I couldn't couldn't even log in. The Defense Department, universities, and research centers are still recovering tonight from a computer virus that brought a nationwide network to a standstill. There are reports in newspapers today that it has made its way to Europe and to Australia. Computer experts are anxiously trying to develop a cure or a preventative while recognizing their systems remain extremely vulnerable to an assortment of computer infections. By the morning of November 3rd, the race was on to find a way to stop the worm program from spreading. But with no central authority on computer issues, the task of finding a solution fell to computer science professors and their students at universities. Informal teams at UC Berkeley, MIT, and Purdue worked for days attempting to dissect the virus and find ways to stop it. While solutions to kill the worm would eventually be found, communicating these findings was another challenge, since the worm had also hit email servers. This meant that messages took hours or even days to reach their destination, adding to the chaos of the recovery effort. Eventually, the computer science community was able to restore order on the internet, but over $10 million was spent on fixing the damage caused by the Morris worm. 
Meanwhile, on November 5, 1988, the FBI officially opened an investigation into the origin of the computer worm and quickly traced it back to Morris. Investigators raided his Cornell apartment, seizing documents and floppy disks as digital evidence. The legal battle that ensued would be extremely controversial, once again putting Morris in the national spotlight. He was indicted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986, the first ever use of the law. However, the unprecedented scale of the attack and the jury's lack of technical knowledge raised several questions about how much of a punishment Moore should receive, especially since he claimed he never had malicious intent. After a series of debates and a federal appeal, Morris would eventually be found guilty by a federal judge on March 7, 1991, and sentenced to probation and a $10,000 fine. While many considered this to be a slap on the wrist, it was clear that the Justice Department intended to use Morris as an example to deter future hackers, and the case proved to be an important frontier for digital justice moving forward. The ramifications of the worm extended far beyond the legal sphere as well. The incident was covered extensively by media outlets across the globe, and in the eyes of the public, it had revealed the weaknesses and severe dangers of the internet. The realization that users could no longer trust the safety of their machines when wired into the network forever changed the public's perception of the technology field, as the trustworthy nature of the internet began to vanish. This was a really important time for computers, uh, and it was the first time the public realized that maybe it couldn't be trusted to always be there maybe there could actually be problems that would bring it down. And that was, that was really disastrous. For government officials, the lack of a centralized response to the incident was a particular point of concern, and it was clear that a government-appointed team needed to be put in place to handle such events. As a result, on December 6, 1988, DARPA provided funding to create the first government organization dedicated to computer security incidents. The Computer Emergency Response Team, or CERT, was established to serve as a focal point for coordinating incident response efforts in the future. The worm was also the focus of several conferences across the country in the following months. On a broader scale, it was clear that businesses in the computer industry needed to put far greater emphasis on cybersecurity in their products and software, especially for systems with sensitive information, such as computers in the financial sector. The image the public has of our computer systems, their quality and what they do, has been hurt. It's going to cause a lot of computer companies to think a little bit more on how they go about instituting security in their systems and testing the software. As a result of the new and increasing threat posed by computer viruses, banks and businesses are beefing up their security measures to reduce the chance of a financial catastrophe. The 1990s brought about even more expansion for the internet thanks to the growth of personal computers in homes around the world. But with that came an exponential rise in the number of malicious programs on the network, a large percentage of which were inspired and modeled after Morris's worm. After this internet incident, the number of computer viruses that were being written and released jumped into the hundreds in a matter of a year. And there was this realization that this software is gonna be more of a problem and we have to take an approach that's different than what we were taking before. The growing virus issue led to the development of a new type of application designed to ward off threats, dubbed antivirus software. By the early 90s, the market was flooded with dozens of these so-called vaccine programs, such as McAfee and Norton. This new cybersecurity industry, which found its roots in the Morris Worm of 1988, would become one of the fastest growing industries of the 90s, and was the dawn of a new era for the technology field. The events surrounding the Morris Worm were a frontier in the history of computer science. The trial was a landmark case as the first conviction for a computer crime and set the precedent for future computer trials going forward. The widespread public panic and media exposure revealed to the world for the first time how dangerous the internet could really be. The massive damage acted as a much-needed wake-up call to technology companies that their development practices needed to change, and directly led to the first government cybersecurity agency. And, while the success of the worm led to the formation of similar attacks, the Morris worm was ultimately responsible for the start of a new frontier, the field of cybersecurity, an essential part of keeping our devices safe and secure.